Hi there, it's Caroline Strawson here, Rapid Transformational Therapist specialising in codependency and narcissistic abuse. So today I want to talk to you about our emotional response process. I get loads of messages asking me, why do I feel the way that I do? Why is it I feel so anxious all of the time? Why is it I feel like I can't relax? Why is it that something happens in my life, I just think I'm getting better, and then all of a sudden, boom, I am back feeling this anxious, wobbly mess. And I know what that's like because I have been there. But there's lots of changes that go on in your brain when you have been the victim of narcissistic abuse. There's a whole host of things. And if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can go and look at lots and lots of education and videos that I have already done on this. But today I want to talk to you about this emotional response process because it's really important, I think, and I do this with all of my clients, is that you have some kind of psychoeducation. So you are able to understand what is going on in your brain so that can really, really help you with your healing and recovery process. So it starts off here with the trigger and the event. So you could be going along in your life and then all of a sudden, boom, something happens. And all of a sudden, through this emotional response process, you suddenly start to feel pins and needles, your heart is racing, you feel really, really anxious in that moment. And you don't know why, because you're thinking, I thought I was healing, I'm really, really trying hard. Maybe you're implementing lots of things, but there's real key strategies for you that can really help you move forward quicker and accelerate your healing. But today I want to talk to you about why is that going on? So it starts off with the trigger or the event. So you're going about your life, Maybe you get a message from your ex, maybe your narcissistic mother gives you a call and says something to you and that gives you that trigger. Now, what happens next is the interpretation and meaning you attach to that trigger or event. Now, this comes from all of your past history, all of your experiences, all of that subconscious programming that has happened throughout your life, through your childhood and beyond which then elicits an emotional response. Now that emotional response based upon your interpretation or the meaning that you have attached to this event and trigger means that you then have a specific emotional response. So let's just say your ex-husband has sent you a message. That has been your trigger. Your interpretation of that is how dare he. Also highlighting deep rooted feelings of maybe your worthiness. He's questioning you as a parent which elicits an emotional response to you with anger. And you feel really angry, how dare he say that? That then elicits a chemical response in your body, cortisol, which then elicits your physical response where you might feel shaky. You have felt really shaky with rage, <laughs> I know I have. So it starts here, the trigger the event, the interpretation and meaning you attach to this, which then gives you the emotional response of anger, sadness, hurt. It could even be happiness here because happiness is an emotional response. So if this was happiness at this stage, your chemical response might be oxytocin or dopamine. And then your physical response would be that nice calm feeling that we like to feel like. But in these moments when you are feeling really, really angry and you feel really, really, your heart's racing, you've got butterflies in your tummy, maybe you've got pins and needles in your hand, it's because you've got cortisol running around your body because of your chemical response. Because actually your emotional response is that anger or hurt, because your interpretation and meaning in some way, due to this trigger or event, is I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy enough. Now some of you might be watching and thinking, that's not my interpretation because I know I am good enough. It doesn't matter. Emotion overrides logic every single time. So if you imagine, if you've got a deep rooted belief of that you're not worthy or you're not good enough, any trigger or event that happens that shines a spotlight on that belief is going to give you an emotional response of anger, of hurt or sadness or disappointment, which will then take you to the chemical and physical response. And that becomes how you feel, how you are in your everyday life. 
So if we change our interpretation and meaning, if we do a lot of deep inner work, and this is what I do with my clients, so we do a lot of deep inner work, inner child healing, because up until the age of seven, we're in the theta brainwave, and this is a hypnotic state, and it's where all of our messages and subconscious programming is happening due to our parents, our caregivers, the environment that we are in. And that becomes our blueprint then, our subconscious program for who we are when we are adults. Now, if we've never upgraded that subconscious program, then, and, and we're kind of got this belief that we're not good enough, we're not worthy, well, any interpretation of any trigger or event that is going to highlight that in us, questioning us as a mother or a father, a daughter, a friend in the workplace, that's immediately going to elicit our interpretation of meaning. How dare you say that? I am good enough. I am worthy. And it's that inner child screaming out about not being good enough. Your ego comes to the surface and acts like anger, anger, anger external, 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 because if I change how they are, then maybe they'll make me feel good enough. Everything is external. Remember, the ego comes to the fore to look externally for um, opportunities and reasons so you can go back to your equilibrium, because it doesn't want you to go deep within, because that's going to be too painful for you to heal that inner child. But we have to work deep. We have to work within to heal that inner child if we want to heal, survive and thrive, after narcissistic abuse, or indeed any other trauma. Because at the end of the day, if our interpretation and meaning is always going to be eliciting a cortisol chemical response, that's not healthy for us. You know, 80% of disease and illness now in the world today is caused by stress, it's caused by cortisol. So if we can work on our interpretation and meaning of events and triggers, we can turn that around. So take for instance, um, myself, and I'll use me as an example. So right in the beginning when me and my ex-husband split up, if I had a message, boy oh boy, my interpretation of meaning, particularly if it was about being a mum, I would want to react because my emotional response would be anger, how dare you? The chemical response would be cortisol, my physical response would be shakiness, fast heart rate, pins and needles, real anxiety symptoms because my interpretation was, how dare he say that? He's questioning me as a mum but because I ended up even in a relationship with a narcissist, my underlying belief at that stage was I wasn't good enough. I'm not worthy. And all the narcissist had done was shine a great big spotlight on that and really highlighted all the stuff that I actually already felt about myself. I just had never dealt with that and they were shining a spotlight on it. So anything, anything that he would say or do, I would interpret and add meaning to that, that in some way he was challenging whether I was worthy or good enough because I was immediately in the emotional part of my brain, in the limbic system, and I was straight away feeling anger and hurt, which then would elicit all of these other responses. Now, when I did the deep inner work, when I reset my subconscious beliefs so that I knew I was good enough. Now, I do this with my clients with something called rapid transformational therapy, which is a combination of hypnosis psychotherapy, CBT and NLP. And it's a two hour session with my clients. And I take them back to scenes where they've attached certain meanings to events, which then became their subconscious beliefs. So when we go back, I don't change the events, I change the meaning that they have attached to those events. So take me for instance, again, I'll use me as an example. So when I was sort of seven, eight years old, I'd be prancing around in my lounge doing bits of gymnastics and uh, my dad would be the judge. And he would always give me a score of 9.99 recurring. Now, we can laugh about that now, and you know, and I look back and I think, oh, he never gave me a 10. But in that moment as that child who had really tried hard to do her gymnastics and knew that she'd done a perfect routine in her opinion, her dad, my father, sat there giving me 9.99 recurring. I didn't think as that seven, eight year old child, ah, my dad, He's not emotionally available, so he isn't able to give me a 10 anyway. That's the reason he's doing that. That didn't cross my mind because I would never have thought that about an adult. And as children, we never think it's the adult's fault. We never think it's the adult who, who is wrong because they're older. They're, you know, we respect them. They're the elders. So in that moment for me, it was, I can't be good enough. It must be me. I'll do it again and I'll do it again. Because my interpretation and meaning I attached to that event was, not that my dad was emotionally unavailable and wasn't able to give me a 10, 
the meaning and interpretation I attached to that event was I wasn't good enough. So for me, when I went back in RTT, I realized actually I need to change the meaning that I attached to that event. Can't change the event because it's happened. So my new meaning that I attached to that event is the adult that I am now looking through the eyes of that child, but with all of the experiences that I now have, I could see it was my dad just in his way thinking he was funny, thinking it was hilarious, but actually my dad's childhood led him to be quite an emotionally unavailable parent to, to me. Never said I love you or I'm proud of you. So this then created my subconscious belief is I'm not worthy or good enough. So when I did that deep inner work, I realized my dad behaving like that to me was in no way a reflection of whether I was good enough or not. What it was was up to his capabilities of how he was as a parent based upon his childhood. But obviously it's that child, I didn't have that cognitive ability that I was able to process that. So what happened was I could change my interpretation and meaning. So fast forward to now, if I say get an email or a message from my ex-husband, 10 years ago, whew, that emotional response process would have been uh, anger and rage. Whereas now I'm coming from a place of knowing that I'm good enough, knowing I'm worthy. So whatever that event is, my interpretation isn't, I'm not good enough, that's why he's saying that. My interpretation is, I'm ignoring it, I'm not replying to it, I'm not giving that any energy, which keeps me nice and calm, which means I don't have any cortisol being released and I don't have that physical response to that. But I had to do that deep inner work to start off with. Now I wanted to share this with you and I share this a lot with my clients to help them understand the psychoeducation of why you feel the way you do. Why do we react the way we do? Well, we do that because of our interpretation and meaning that we attach to all of these things that are happening. And very often that means it's come from to give us the emotional response of all of the stuff that has happened to us in the past. So you imagine all of these things that you know that have happened in your past and if you're working on yourself right now and you keep feeling like you're reacting to things all of the time, work backwards. Your body tells the story of where you are right now. Very often we think of psychology as just in the brain and in the head, but it isn't. And how I work is it's a very much a mind and body experience, a very much somatic healing because it has to be. Trauma is stored in your body. It isn't just about what goes on in the brain. For my clients who've got complex post-traumatic stress disorder, which pretty much every single one will have coming out of a narcissistic relationship, it's the trauma that is stored in the body. Many of my clients, many of the people in my groups, they will have fibromyalgia, digestive issues, adrenal fatigue, thyroid problems, liver issues, all of these things, because we're holding on to trauma in our body because of this chemical response, because of all our interpretation and meanings. And we have to go back and unlayer everything, build a solid foundation, starting with a real strong looking at your subconscious beliefs. What are your beliefs about yourself? However much consciously you may say, I am good enough, I am worthy, emotion overrides logic every time. So however much talking therapy you go to, which don't get me wrong, I'm an advocate of too, if you don't change that underlying core belief of how you feel about yourself, it will always come back. I used to have um, my inner critic, I used to name, I love the film Mrs Doubtfire. So my inner critic, my emotion overriding logic every time was Mrs Doubtfire. I called her Mrs Doubtfire, I gave her a name because I teach keep it separate. It's not part of me, it's just in this moment because of all the things that have happened is why I felt the way that I did. So it's all about your interpretation and your meaning. And I also do EMDR with my clients, which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing because memories can get stuck. And when those memories get stuck and we're in that heightened state of alert with the amygdala and the hippocampus hasn't processed all of those memories, again, we get stuck with that interpretation and meaning because the hippocampus hasn't said that these particular events are now in the past. It's like they're happening in the present. So the moment you have that trigger, boom, your amygdala is on hyper alert. We're in danger, danger, danger mode. Your hippocampus hasn't processed it that it's all in the past. It's like it's happening to you right now. It's coming up with all of those old subconscious beliefs about not being worthy. 
which then elicits your emotional, chemical and physical response, which becomes who you are. So we've got to peel back those layers. So really think about where you are right now in your journey of healing from trauma, from narcissistic abuse, looking at codependency. Are you somebody who keeps on reacting to things, who keeps on getting angry all of the time, sad all of the time? What we need to do is look at your interpretation and meaning. We need to go deep within and do some deep inner child healing of those subconscious beliefs and we need to unstick all of those memories so we can almost put them away in filing cabinets so we know they're in the past. We change the meaning you've attached to these events. We process all of those memories that have been stuck so you are able to move forward. So I hope that's helpful. If you haven't subscribed to this um, channel, please do so. Hit the subscribe button so you get all of my videos then once I upload them. And I hope this has been really, really helpful. If you want any more information of any of the things that I do, then please go below or go on. If you're watching this on Instagram, then please go and look in my bio on the link tree. You will see all of the things that I'm able to offer from free stuff all the way up to my one-to-one -one coaching programs and uh, EMDR and RTT therapy as well. So I hope this, this really helped me when I understood this, because for me, if we can get understanding why we think the way that we do, so a lot of the stuff I do is around the neuroscience, what goes on in our brain and in our body, because when we understand it is not your fault, but it is your responsibility. It's your responsibility to consciously choose to want to heal. And when you do that, everything changes and we can work on this interpretation of meaning, which has this amazing effect then on the emotional, on the chemical and on the physical response then as well.